Okay, just finished up a little four mile run and now uh, we're gonna be talking about these things that I run in. These are my Ultra Escalantes and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about them. I wanna talk about the shoes and how I've been using minimalist shoes for a while now and what I like about them. But uh, I think we're gonna go to the garage for that, get out of the park. And I'm gonna change so I'm not pouring sweat. All right, let's go. Okay, so straight from the top, let's uh, let's be clear about one thing. I am not a professional. I'm not a podiatrist. I have no degrees in this. The only thing I'm talking about today is my own personal experience, my own personal beliefs. So definitely don't just jump headfirst into this. Do your own research. Ask a doctor, ask a podiatrist. If you have someone you trust, go to them, talk about it. Um, because you can get injured if you just jump into this 100%. So please take this seriously. Don't just jump into barefoot. So what is barefoot and why does it make sense? Barefoot is just that, it's going barefoot uh, or using shoes that allow your foot to feel like it is barefoot. And, and a, a common expression is rewilding your feet, getting back to where we were before the modern shoe era. Well, research has shown that as you switch to barefoot, your muscle mass in your foot expands. And as that expansion happens, your foot gets stronger. You are less likely to have injuries and more efficient function of your feet. So if you think about it like this, the foot is made up of 26 bones, 30 joints, 100 muscles, and 200,000 sensitive nerve endings. Our feet were made to be strong, to feel, stretch, spring, and contract. And when we stuff them into these thick boats, we make them soft and weak, and we, we dull those feelings that our, our feet are supposed to be activating as we walk and as we run. So I learned about this firsthand because as I started training for this marathon that, that I've been posting about every single day, um, I was heel striking like crazy because I didn't know anything about running form or, or, or shoes or barefoot. I had no idea about any of this. I just started running and every single step I was striking with my heel and striking with my heel, sending pain through my whole body. I would finish a short run and my knee would be on fire. I have a, I have a bad right knee, but now both of my knees were hurting. It was, it was crazy pain. It got to the point where every morning I would wake up, I'd step on the ground and I would feel like knives were going up both of my heels. It would just shoot straight up my heels, my shins, my knee, my back. It was just like literally like electric shock just shooting straight up through my body. Even after buying like the thickest shoes and custom orthotics, like none of that stuff worked for longer than like a month. You know, as soon as I would get an orthotic, I'd put them in my shoe, it would work, quote unquote work for like a month and then, and then all that pain would come back. Dr. Daniel Lieberman, who's a scientist at Harvard, said that running in cushioned shoes is like hitting someone in the heel with a hammer. That's not good. Barefoot running helps alleviate pains like plantar fasciitis, pains in the knee, because as you run in barefoot shoes, it's not like thick soled shoes. You're not gonna be heel striking them because that will hurt because you'll feel it more. And that's the whole point is we're trying to get your feet to feel again. I mean, look at this shoe. Like if you were running in this shoe and you strike the ground, look at all that foam there that's gonna absorb that shock. It's gonna absorb the shock in your heel, but it's gonna send that shock straight up through your body. And so rather than striking with your heel, you'll strike with your midfoot or your forefoot. That helps kind of like give a suspension to your running, which is a natural form of running. And let's be clear again, I've only been doing this for six months, but even after six months, I have felt a huge difference in my day-to-day -day life. From running to walking, going upstairs, my knee pain, my ankle pain, plantar fasciitis, I don't even know what that is anymore. I used to suffer from it every day. I had everything, people, okay? I had the things that you strap on at night. I had the, the toe wraps. I had all that stuff. Nothing worked. This is the only thing that has worked is switching to barefoot. So what is a barefoot or minimalist shoe? For me, that's three things. A wide toe box, 
a flexible shoe, and a thin sole. Wide toe box, a flexible shoe, and a thin sole. You can see how thin the insert is in this shoe. That is <laughs> very thin. I mean, very, very thin. This is by far my favorite uh, barefoot shoe that I have. It is by Vivo, but it's not the only option. There are a lot of other shoes out there. We also have <laughs> everyone's favorite, the Vibram Five Fingers. Um, these shoes get a lot of hate, okay? And for good reason. They're, well, the thing is, is they're hideous, <laughs> but they are so comfortable. They're great. These specifically are really great. They got a ton of grip on the bottom, so you can kind of, uh, you can wear them hiking if you wanted. I actually hiked the entire Nepali coast in Kauai with these right here uh, before I even knew anything about barefoot. I just thought they were like water shoes, you know? Anyway, these are great shoes, but they're hideous. And that's why shoes like Vivo are great because you can wear barefoot shoes that don't look like barefoot shoes, at least from a distance. Um, these are both from Vivo. These are uh, their Vivo Primus Lights 2s, and these are the, I don't know what these are. These I love to wear walking around, training. Uh, I love doing the kettle kettlebell exercises or lifting with these because they're flat, so they get you closer to the earth, so you have more balance, at more of a natural stance, and, uh, and that's why these are great. Uh, but if I'm walking around or if I'm wearing jeans or something, I, these are my go-to because um, they just kind of look like a, like a regular sneaker. They got a little bit of shine to them, so they're kind of nice. Let's be real. Anything is better than the Vibram Five Fingers, okay? <laughs> because, man, man, that's an ugly shoe. You, you're not going to wear this with jeans. What? You're not going to wear this with jeans? It's not going to happen. I'm sorry, Vibram. You're an incredible company. The soles are amazing. The quality, amazing. The design, hideous. The other shoes you've seen me wear that I started the video with are these Ultra uh, Escalantes. They, these are my running shoes. You'll notice the difference right away that uh, these have a much thicker sole than my Vivos. So these aren't, I would say, truly minimalist shoes because they don't have as much bend to them. Um, they're pretty, they're still pretty bendy, you know, for a modern shoe, but the thing that I love the most about these is the toe box. Look at the design on the bottom of the, of the shoe. What does that look like to you? A foot, because it's designed for a foot. Look at the bottom of my, of my old running shoe, uh, my old Pumas. What does that look like? Who knows? Have you ever seen a foot shaped like that? No, you've never seen a foot shaped like that. Have you seen a foot shaped like this? Huh? You see what I'm talking about? The wide toe box. Stop wearing shoes that were not designed for your feet. Start wearing shoes that put your foot first and then design and fashion second. A little bit thicker of a sole, but that's really because like I'll, I ran, you know, a half marathon in these, literally, just like the other day. So uh, these are really, really great. I also have a second pair of Ultras that I got. These are the first pair I got. The, these are Ultra Lone Peaks. Um, these are really, really great shoes. I ran my Spartan race in these. Again, foot design, foot first, right there. These obviously have a lot more grip on them, which is why I wore them for the Spartan race. What's important about both of these Ultras and why I consider them a minimalist shoe is obviously the wide foot design, but also the zero drop. So what zero drop is, is the distance from the heel to the ground from the toe to the ground so it's the same distance here as here whereas and i hate to keep picking on puma but if you look at my pumas the distance from here to here is not the same right so it has a heel you don't want that all right so we've talked about the shoes we talked about why i started now if you're interested let's talk about transition do not go out and buy all these shoes and then start wearing them and going out for a run. Don't do it, you will hurt yourself. I'm telling you, you could you could literally really, really hurt yourself. You spent your entire life walking around and running around in dumb shoes like this. Your feet are weak and soft. You cannot just jump from this to this overnight. I promise you, you will hurt yourself. I would recommend the first month that you buy your shoes 
just wear them for a couple hours a day walking around the house. Don't go on long, long walks. In the beginning, my feet hurt. I had a, I questioned what I was doing quite a bit because my feet were in so much pain, but my feet were so weak. My feet were so soft. And so now that my feet are much, much stronger, um, I, I'm able to go further distances. I'm able to walk around in my Vivos or barefoot all day long, no problem. I haven't been able to transition to running in my Vivos or running in my Vibrams. You know, I, if you think about it, I've, my feet have spent 33 years being one way and now I'm just gonna change it overnight? No, it's not gonna happen. So it's recommended to actually take like a full year to transition into running in minimalist shoes and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have no rush for this, okay? This is, this is something that I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my life. I've already felt the effects of going barefoot and how much it's helped my life. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm in no rush. So I'll take, you know, a year, year and a half before I start running any significant distances with barefoot shoes. So there are a lot of resources that I use and, and have used uh, every day. And so th those links are all down below. But I wanted to talk about one in particular that kind of kickstarted this whole thing. It was a book that I read called Born to Run. It's an incredible book. E even if you're not into running, I've talked about it on this channel before, but even if you're not into running, it's just a great adventure book. It's great storytelling. It tells about the, these ancient runners, this tribe of people called the Tata Umara. And, uh, and, and they're my people, okay? They're, they're, they're from Mexico. And I think that's really why I connected with the book is that, you know, I wasn't born to be 400 pounds. I was born to run. I was born to move. I was born to feel. And, uh, and that's kind of what kickstarted this whole thing. It's got a lot of research in the book, kind of sprinkled in. Um, in between the story, so it's not just a, a boring book about feet, but uh, it's a really, like I said, can't recommend it enough. Go check it out. Um, also, shout out to Eric Orton, who's the trainer, uh, one of the running trainers in that book, and uh, Barefoot Ted, who's in the book. They uh, they both we we follow each other on Instagram, and they're they're awesome guys. And Barefoot Ted actually has uh, a barefoot running company or shoe company called Luna Luna Sandals. And so it's basically like a barefoot sandal that you can uh, go out and walk and run in. And uh, that's gonna be my next step is uh, the barefoot sandal to really, really get back to nature and get back to, to rewilding my feet. I hope you liked the video. You might think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, uh, the only reason I'm this passionate about it is because I felt the effects of it. I was in so much pain and now I'm not. If you liked the video, please click like, click subscribe and definitely click that little stupid bell. I guess you have to click now to get notified when I post. It's not enough that you subscribe, you also have to click a bell. Um, so please do that so that way you know when the next one comes out and I will see you next week. Thank you so, so much. Stay hard and be relentless. Peace.